the IT industry, uh, years ago when I wrote about it first, it would have been a niche, something that you would have read about in computer magazines. Today, every fabric of our life is touched by technology. But if anything, um, keeping control of that technology and running it from an enterprise perspective, uh, the stakes are even higher now. Um, security breaches, uh, the need to keep the lights on the whole time. In terms of the biggest IT issues of our day, it's 2015. What would be the, the biggest IT issues as you see them as it relates to CIOs? Well, I think we, we are in the midst of a transition right now. Um, we have gone from a world in which we have connected business and people, and that has created huge enterprises. Out of that came Google, Amazon, all the sort of household names that we today use uh, in our daily lives. We're now seeing a transition into the connection of things. So we are operating in a world soon that will connect people, business, and things in new innovative ways. It will create similarly large companies as Google. We just don't know who they are today. Uh, that transition essentially makes technology invisible. Uh, technology is everywhere around us. And the differentiating aspect of this will be that the systems will have information, and therefore information becomes the oil of the 21st century. It's what, what makes us personally uh, more knowledgeable. It also makes us personally more valuable. Um, and obviously it also creates opportunity for new kinds of businesses. Um, security, uh, you know, years ago I remember in the 90s writing about viruses and hacker attacks and as if there were big things then, they're everything now. Uh, if anything, um, we're in an era of cyber warfare now as well. Yes. In terms of security issues and the trends towards defending the perimeter, does the perimeter even exist anymore? The whole aspect of trying to defend around a perimeter has disappeared because it's impossible. You, you, you're fighting a losing battle. Uh, in which uh, you as an organization or as an individual, you only have to lose once, whereas the hacker that's trying to get in can try a thousand times. Uh, and so this is not about uh, a walled garden around everything that we have, either as individuals or as businesses. It's about capabilities to predict where security breaches will happen and so in all of this uh, information data, uh, big data, becomes really the differentiating aspect of security in the future. And it becomes a world in which we create this opportunity to detect personal breaches in our daily lives and also for businesses to really predict where the next breach will come and actually try to remedy the issues before they actually occur. Um, in terms of then um, the IT world as we know it today, I mean, once upon a time, your personal computer was your personal computer and your enterprise was something that sat miles and miles and miles away. But as, as you just interact with your devices, you're already touching the, the, the enterprise straight away, you know, whether you're putting something into Dropbox or whatever. Uh, in terms of the shape of the IT landscape, back in the 90s, it was the IBMs and Microsofts who ruled the roost. Uh, we saw there last week, Apple, uh, had the, probably the most profitable quarter of any tech company ever. Yes. Um, and that's something you would not have believed back in 1996 when Microsoft rescued Apple, believe it or not. So in terms of the, the, the kings of IT today, uh, who, who, really, who really rules the roost in IT? The companies that rule today are the companies that are defined by the consumer being their primary customer. Uh, this is consumerization of IT. Uh, it brings down the cost point of technology, whether it is any handheld device we have or any piece of software. Uh, and it is all that that is then rolling in uh, over anything that a private business or a company or an organization uses as technology. So consumerization of technology is the consumer dominating uh, through the fact that the purchasing power of the consumer in aggregate is much larger than that of enterprises. Now, what's happening going forward is as every physical asset that human beings create, manufacture, uh, become connected to the internet, uh, then uh, the broadening of what is technology becomes so immense uh, that we then start to see both uh, things and consumers dominate what is technology and therefore create frankly, new enterprises. We will have new companies, a la Apple or Google, that are going to be created in this world where you're integrating people, business, and things. When I think of that, I think uh, what was pacing through my mind there was um, 3D printing, for example, and 
uh, the ability of people to make things and put it all together. And you know, you're seeing models emerge where retailers in the US are, you know, rather than holding parts on site, are actually manufacturing things as they need them. Uh, you've US Army manufacturing parts as they need them. You even have astronauts in space manufacturing things they need. We've talked about. 3D printing, even food. Um, in terms of this, uh, the, the things like 3D printing and, and the maker's revolution and the new economies of scale, um, what kind of promise does this hold for people as entrepreneurs even? Well, I mean, 3D printing disrupts the way in which we manufacture assets and also have to store assets that get reused, obviously, as spare parts or, or other things. And so th this is going to change the world of manufacturing uh, and the world of using technology. We don't necessarily only have to rely on low cost environments to produce things and sell them in higher cost environments because we will be able to, to change that uh, supply chain. Um, we will therefore also be able to change the cost structure of technology. Um, for example, auto manufacturers today legally have to have spare parts for 12 years. Uh, railway uh, equipment manufacturers have to hold equipment for 35 years. This therefore changes the cost structure because they don't actually have to hold the physical asset, they just have to hold the digital imprint of what it is. So we will see significant uh, disruption and opportunity created through 3D printing. It is frankly one of the more fascinating aspects uh, that as you say span beyond just printing out dumb little plastic things. Um, with where the, this technology is today, uh, metal parts, uh, and as you say, food can be created this way. So we're in for a significant change, which interestingly enough, primarily will affect well-established companies in sort of the asset-intensive industries. Those industries are the ones that actually face the biggest change. They're also the ones that are actually, interestingly enough, showing the greatest level of innovation in terms of what they're doing today because they know they have to change.